Assalamu alaikum students. So we are continuing our water balance lectures. In the last lecture, we talked about uh, the, the difficulty in concentrating urine. Uh, we just introduced those topic, uh, the comparison between uh, overhydration and dehydration and the renal response uh, to these two scenarios. So the uh, one being when water is in, is in abundance uh, and, uh, and, the, and the kidney responds to that. And the other is when water is uh, scarce, uh, how should the kidney respond to that? I left that lecture with a question, uh, what do you think uh, the kidney would uh, struggle more with, uh, water abundance or water deprivation? Uh, we'll be answering that today. So the learning objectives is a renal response to overhydration and renal response to dehydration. As you can see, this is not a very busy place here. It's straightforward. However, here you have all sorts of uh, mechanisms, which obviously will uh, take the bulk of this uh, video. Uh, so in under dehydration, we'll be studying uh, a, a mechanism called the countercurrent multiplier, the UDA cycle, and the countercurrent exchanger. Okay. So first, let's uh, uh, speak about dilution of urine. Uh, what basically is happening is water is in abundance, or you are overhydrating yourself. Uh, how would the kidney uh, react? What do you expect the kidney to do? You want the kidney to excrete this extra water out uh, and retain the solute. Okay. This is an important point, uh, retaining the solute, because if you let the solute go as well, then you will again add to the hypoosmolarity, uh, which has been created by your increased fluid intake. So you will want to hold on to the solute, but at the same time, get rid of the water. Okay. How does it do? It's uh, rather straightforward. This is where, this is what we, we intend to do, uh, reabsorb solute, and not allow water to follow. This is the simple thing. And if you if you if you see the nephron, uh, this is how it is. It's uh, the PCT is where pretty much things are fixed. You can't do much here. Uh, so so the isoosmotic reabsorption of water and solute that I have been talking about initially. This is uh, something which uh, is constant and cannot be changed. Okay. It's uh, the thick ascending limb of Lupofenle where you have where you can dissect out the solute from the water this is also called the diluting segment as mentioned before and this is where you separate out you reabsorb sodium chloride into the interstitium uh, but water cannot follow it uh, like it can uh, like it follows in the pct here the water cannot follow and hence what you have is uh, the tubular fluid becomes dilute because you've removed the salt and now what remains behind is the water. Uh, you can also see uh, these values of osmolarity of tubular fluid that uh, 300 is what uh, is uh, uh, the plasma osmolarity. So when uh, fluid flows out of the proximal coronary tubule into the loop of Henle, the, the osmolarity of the tubular fluid is 300. So this is something very important which uh, uh, one needs to be very careful about in the next slides when we are talking about concentration of fluid. Anyhow, so this this 300 is the osmolarity of fluid when it enters the loop of Henle and, and all sorts of things then happen. Water goes out, which again we will talk in detail about in the in the concentration of urine scenario because this segment is permeable to water, not to solute. Okay, so water goes out. The 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 concentration of the uh, osmolarity of the of the tubular fluid increases from 300 to around 600 at the bend of the uh, loop of Henle because of water being given out and not solute. And in the thin thin ascending limb, uh, you have some uh, sodium chloride going out. Okay, uh, these are minor uh, minor bits, uh, 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 minor mechanisms rather in dilution of urine scenario. They they assume uh, a lot of importance in concentration of urine. So coming to the thick ascending limb, again, as I said, you will, you will pump out uh, the salt, but uh, the water cannot follow because of the 
anatomy of the epithelium of the segment. So you can you can imagine now that uh, the 600 became 100. Uh, osmolarity became so diluted because you did not allow water to go out. Now this uh, fluid will then uh, move to the collecting ducts where it will simply uh, uh, further decrease in its uh, 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 solute content because you will have seepage of sodium chloride here and in the inner medulla as well. However, uh, since there is uh, no uh, ADH present, so these segments are ADH sensitive as mentioned before, uh, since ADH is at a low because the plasma osmolarity is dilute uh, and for ADH as you know that plasma osmolarity needs to increase for ADH to release. So in this scenario you don't have that ADH. So water in this urine will just flow out. There is no stimulus for water reabsorption because this is a low ADH uh, scenario. So overall uh, you, 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 you witness that in this nephron it's not really struggling for anything. It doesn't need to do much. It just does what it does naturally. Uh, and each segment is basically doing its job. Uh, there is no going out of the way to do anything significant. Uh, thick ascending limb is again the main character here. Uh, and so is the collecting duct. Okay. Uh, nothing spectacular is happening. It's just uh, the run of the mill and, and uh, no, no, it's simple diuresis. You let 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 go of the water. So the answer to the question of the previous lecture is that dilution of urine is not the challenging scenario. It's actually concentration of the urine. Now let me take some time here to to uh, to introduce you to the challenge of concentration of urine. So remember, this is now a dehydration scenario. The body is in dehydration. Okay, water is less is scarce what has happened is that plasma osmolarity has risen because of less water. Now this hyperosmolar plasma is a problem because whenever wherever it's going to go it will affect cell volumes as we have discussed uh, the process of osmosis and all that. Now this needs to be addressed pretty quickly okay because it will mess up uh, cell volumes uh, in crucial organs like the brain and elsewhere so the kidney then uh, needs to do something and this is this is the scenario this is the setting this is the stage now what is the problem just just work, just tell the kidney to reabsorb extra water now this is the problem you see I have been saying this all along uh, since we've been discussing osmolarity that water reabsorption is always passive okay so to reabsorb water, uh, you need to have uh, uh, channels uh, along the tubule uh, along which water can go down its gradient. So wherever there is a natural gradient present between high water concentration in the lumen and low water concentration in the interstitium uh, uh, surrounding the uh, uh, tubule, water will naturally come out. Okay, uh, the second most favored thing for water movement is it tags along sodium because sodium is a, a effective osmol. Uh, it it gathers around uh, uh, water molecules uh, when it's allowed to, and it does not move uh, alone. It always drags this, uh, the the water with it. So that's that's another way that water tags along. However. This is obviously we're talking about normal normal stuff but when you want extra and put air, air quotes on the extra now you want extra water to be reabsorbed you want that 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 extra water coming coming uh, com going which would have gone uh, wasted in the urine you want that you want to reclaim that you want to minimize uh, the the free water that is in the urine because why? Because the plasma has become osmolar. You want to reabsorb extra water so that the hyperosmolarity of plasma is addressed. That is the problem. Why is that a problem? You need to create now a situation because water is always passively 
uh, reabsorbed. So where will you get the extra drive, the extra punch to get to claim or reabsorb this extra water? For this, you need to have a maneuver. You need to you need to create a, a trap so that uh, water, extra water, can be reabsorbed. And this is the story now. Okay, this is the challenge uh, of uh, for the kidney in concentration scenarios, which it's not the case in dilution. Okay. Now, there are two things mainly. One is you need ADH. And I think by now you understand what ADH is, what it does. This is where ADH comes into play at its, uh, uh, this is where ADH is at its, at its uh, most uh, 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 prolific expression. This is where ADH is really required to deliver antidiuretic hormone. You need antidiuresis because the plasma has become hyper or smaller. You need antidiuresis so that water is now ex, uh, extra water is now reabsorbed. So you need high ADH. Indeed, plus high plasma osmolarity is a stimulus for ADH secretion. Okay. Now this ADH is there. You have you have set up uh, ADH mediated aquaporins uh, in the collecting duct mainly, and now we are set uh, 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 to reabsorb extra water. So the channels are there. However, where is the drive? You need the drive to reabsorb extra water. Remember all of that discussion which I had just now. That can be done by creating, uh, establishing a, a hyperosmolar medullary interstitium. Now remember, this is not the case. Generally speaking, generally uh, uh, the medullary interstitium is indeed, uh, uh, it has more osmolar osmolarity uh, than the outer, uh, outer cortical sections uh, of the nephron. And certainly as compared to plasma, it is hyperosmolar. But in, in concentration of urine, in, in rehydration, it needs to be hyper osmolar. So uh, the, the osmolarity of this interstitium needs to uh, rise uh, many folds to get that extra squeeze of water out of the tubular fluid. And this is that artificial thing, uh, the, the bumping up of the osmolarity that I was talking about, that, that the kidney has to do in cons when, while it's concentrating here. So this is called establishing HOMI, hyper osmolar metal interstitium. The process, how it does it, is countercurrent multiplication. The, uh, there is a countercurrent multiplier. There is a whole mechanism which we'll go into in a bit. So basically, this establishes uh, uh, the stage, uh, the trap, uh, the magnet for extra water reabsorption, uh, uh, because obviously uh, this is uh, hyperosmolarity. So you have you have uh, manage to uh, trap or make available extra solutes in the medullary interstitium so that water has no choice but to come out of the tubular fluid and and uh, you have already laid down the roads for it uh, by making aquaporins available because that's what the adh does so the roads are there the the drag is there the attraction is there water now has really no chance but to come out okay and this is the this is the uh, mechanism by which it does it at the end of this uh, whole lecture uh, we will talk about how to maintain this HOMI and there are challenges uh, for uh, this uh, hyperosmolarity to be maintained 